As you've likely seen, the Biden administration began its withdrawal from Afghanistan and the country was promptly overtaken by the Taliban and people on the left and the right are both angry about this, but for different reasons. So you've got people on the left who are angry because the Taliban doesn't support progressive agendas like feminism, LGBT rights, vaccines, etc. And then people on the right are angry about it because the Taliban made us look like a joke. They're anti-American. They hate us, which is actually because we as a country do support those progressive agendas and have basically become like this culturally imperialistic cancer on the rest of the world. And that's the irony of it to me. Like the left is mad because they're not progressive. And then the right is mad because they're mean to America because we're progressive now. And so the whole thing just serves the interests of the American regime, as we'll talk about, because we're not really going to you know, bore you with these explanations of Middle Eastern geopolitics so we can appear smart and credible with our takes. We're just going to cut right through the noise and focus on what's actually happening here. So we will go over what's happening, why it's happening, why and how it never should have happened, how you personally will be affected by it, why you should actually be concerned about it, why everyone is lying to you, and why this is actually kind of a good thing for us. And maybe you won't agree with any of it, but at least it'll be a perspective that only about three prominent people on the right are talking about right now. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. We will now get into the correct take on the Afghanistan crisis. And it is my belief that if we abandon these manufactured convictions and ego investments, if we're just humble and honest with ourselves, that these are the conclusions at which most of us will arrive. But really quick, let me just remind you that new merch is imminent. It'll be limited stock, so look out for it. Get it while you can. I'll announce when it's live. Um, and then also, if you want to attend the White Boy Summer Super Spreader Weekend Retreat and Jamboree, the boys are renting a lake house. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're bringing out some members from the website to hang out with us as a thank you for supporting the channel. So if you're a member, log in, fill out the form, and then we're going to be picking them on Friday, and I'll record the whole process and put it on the website so you guys can see that. So fill it out ASAP if you're interested in that. It's going to be a blast. But anyways, the correct take on the Afghanistan thing is that the whole thing is not even about Afghanistan. And the media in this country on both sides of the aisle are just distracting the public from what's really going on. And of course, we expect this from the left because they exist as an extension of the party whose purpose is running defense and propaganda but we need to pay very close attention to the people on the right who are doing this as well, but for different reasons as we discussed in the beginning. And the biggest red flags, at least for me, were that I noticed that both sides of the media were in agreement that this was bad, and also that I actually agreed with the statement from Joe Biden, the one that he put out where he said, you know, we've been there for 20 years, we've done our job, we can't be there forever, it's time for the country to govern itself. And I'm not one of these people who's just going to dismiss everything that Joe Biden says, like outright, you know, there's always this part of me that hopes that 1980s, 1990s Joe Biden is still kicking around up there somewhere. But given his mental state, we have to expect that these decisions and statements are not being crafted by him. And so I am skeptical. And it really just depends on what we mean by what we were there to do in the first place. Like it really depends on how we're defining our objectives because effectively the points of being in Afghanistan were to get revenge for 9-11 and to stop terrorism. That's what the attitudes were. That's what most people would tell you. Now, I don't know how we define revenge, but we destabilized their country. We destroyed much of it. We killed a bunch of their people. We do this over the course of 20 years. And People have basically come to terms with the fact that 9-11 was not exactly as it seemed, which partially is because if you can get people to joke about things, then that's all they'll be anymore. It's just jokes. <laughs> Epstein didn't kill himself. 9-11 <laughs> was an inside job. I'm quirky. I'm just so edgy. And just like that, no one cares. No one cares. But yeah. So the attitudes after a while were that we should get out of the Middle East. And this is largely why Donald Trump was elected, because he wanted to get us out of these wars. And that was deviant from the established paradigm of politics in this country, which says that we have to be in these wars, these forever wars, in Definitely. It doesn't matter who's in office, Democrat, Republican, we're going to be involved in these wars. And that is because their true objective isn't to stop terrorism because they cause that. And it's not to get revenge for 9-11. So the reason this has been drawn out and why it's been a failure is because their true objective was to spread imperial and militant liberalism. These people are globalists. They want to bring everyone into line with their global agenda, the global homo agenda. And that failed because that objective is impossible in that territory without a constant and borderline superfluous military presence. It is the equivalent of trying to mount a painting against the wall in your house by just holding it there. 
never going to stay there on its own. You're going to have to stay there and hold it. And the second you walk away, it's going to collapse because that is the natural order of things. The Taliban controlling Afghanistan is as natural and expected as gravity. And we'll explain why in a second, but just keep that in mind. It wasn't really about terrorism. It wasn't really about revenge. It was about nation building. And we were told by the experts that nation building was required to stop terrorism, even though that is why it started in the first place. And speaking of nation building, I've got some predictions about where this country is headed, which we will talk about towards the end. But you know what? You know what you're going to need for that? You're going to need marksmanship. And do I have a product for you? I'll tell you what, folks. The only thing I love more than my firearms is practicing with them. But with the cost of ammo through the roof, I was looking for a cost-effective, safe, and simple way to practice iTarget was invented to give law-abiding gun owners a better way to train in the safety and privacy of their own home. No more inconvenient trips to the range or expensive practice ammunition. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start your training experience. Dry fire training will help develop muscle memory. It sharpens target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, and more. iTarget Pro comes in all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR, so that you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. So go to iTargetPro.com, save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code DOYLE. This is the smartest way for you to practice, and it pays for itself in literally one day. That's the letter itargetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code DOYLE. Very epic, but let us continue. I've been reading a lot of this coverage, and I think there's a question that we have to ask ourselves, which is simply, what are we really upset about with this whole thing? Not saying that we shouldn't be upset, but like if we really nailed it down, what would it be? Like, let's be honest with ourselves. Are we really angry about this? Are we just looking for ways to dunk on Joe Biden, to dunk on the libs? Are we really upset about this whole thing? Because I've seen a lot of people acting like they are, like literally acting. And I get some of it. Yeah, we could have gotten our equipment out of there better. We could have gotten our people out of there better. But do you understand that that's not the problem? That is the distraction from the problem? We've been arming those people for decades. We've been arming terrorist organizations for decades, trying to destabilize regimes to achieve ridiculous ends. And we've been sending thousands of our people to die for these pointless ends for decades as well. So you're going to tell me that it's an honest and legitimate reaction for people to be like, this is awful, folks. This is awful, gang. Young girls are being dressed in burqas and, and being removed from school. This is a total disaster. First of all, ignoring the fact that it wouldn't exactly be the worst thing in the world if women started wearing more clothes and leaving education. How are you going to virtue signal over the rights of young women in a country thousands of miles away when your own children were being pulled out of school and being forced to wear muzzles that stunt their ability to interact with those around them and understand the world? It is all performative. It is all a distraction. It's all a psyop. All these people care about is money. This is the same class of people who shielded the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, who said that it was unpatriotic to not support them, who threw thousands of American lives down the drain, who destroyed thousands of American families, who took trillions from American families to finance the whole operation. Now, all of a the sudden, these people are really concerned about the Americans stuck in Afghanistan. They're concerned about wasting money and arming the bad guys. They support arming the bad guys. They want to arm the bad guys if it's to destabilize a regime, but not inadvertently arming the bad guys when things begin to return to the natural order. And this is the problem. They don't actually care about Americans or how American tax dollars are spent. They are simply trying to make sound and moral arguments for ends which are themselves unsound and immoral. That's the problem. The ends are corrupted. They are impossible. You are never going to spread freedom and democracy to people who don't want freedom and democracy. They literally do not want it. Why have the Taliban been able to sweep through the country in a matter of weeks? Because they have overwhelming support from the people in Afghanistan. They're literally like, oh, back to normal. That was weird, huh? Yeah, we might watch Western media coverage and all of a sudden we're deciding that it's trustworthy, that we're not being lied to. Oh, look, they just happened to get an interview with a young girl who says she can't learn about women's liberation anymore. Ah, that's terrible. Yeah, why do you think they showed you that? That's the exception, my friends, not the rule. Don't believe me? Fair enough. Okay. According to Pew Research, though, 73% of Muslims in Afghanistan, which effectively means 73% of the country since the country is 99.7% Muslim, virtually an entirely Muslim country, 73% of them believe that Sharia is the revealed word of God. Not that man figured it out, and so it's correct, but that it is the truth of our reality. It is the word of God that's just been revealed to man. That's interesting. It gets better. Fully 99% of them want Sharia law, Islamic law to be the official law of the land. How do you construct a democratic liberal society with a population like that? You don't. You enforce one with an illegitimate military occupation, and then they'll just wait in the mountains until you leave, and then they'll just go back to normal. It gets better. 81% of Muslims who want Sharia law, which effectively means 81% of the people in Afghanistan, they want corporal punishment for crimes committed. You know, that's your stuff like cutting off the hands of thieves. Then there's 85% of them who say that they're in favor of stoning adulterers to death. 79% of them who say that you should be killed for leaving Islam. It's all very interesting. What's your plan, neocon? What's your next move? The average IQ of the country is 84, which means they're going to stick with their faith to navigate the world over your Western ideas and abstractions. So what's your move? What's your move? You don't have one because you're stupid and wrong and no one should take you seriously. 
These people are the way that they are. Different peoples exist. Different cultures exist. You're never going to change that. And they were perfectly happy to leave us alone until we started going over there. They actually respected America because we broke free from British imperialism. But then we started messing with them out of a mixture of nihilistic boredom and effective lobbying. And now here we are. And I'm watching the propaganda machine. It continues to churn. I'm watching our media continue to prop up liberals in Afghanistan because Americans have been brainwashed into thinking our freedoms are in danger because their freedom's in danger. The Taliban's going to invade us. Hindsight's 2020, sure, but people actually used to believe that legitimately. And we're all being psyoped into supporting international and globalized liberalism because the left wants it and the right thinks that it's dunking on the left. Yeah, 2015 called. They want their epic owns back. The left claims to be for women's rights, yet they don't call out Muslims. I'm the one really in support of women's rights. Yeah, well, you're an idiot because now look where they are in 2021. They're acknowledging it but you think it's dunking on them and Muslims simultaneously. You supporting international liberalism because you think it's dunking on domestic liberalism. You think they care. They've already cemented it here. You're not a threat to them. Dunk on them as much as you want to. They're working to totally cement the global homo agenda and you've been psyoped into supporting it. And what do you get? Some laughs at the libs, some dopamine, not even a t-shirt. I was psyoped into supporting the global homo agenda and all I got was this lousy t-shirt, not even that. And by the way, I'm not saying I support any of what's happening in Afghanistan, that's not the point, but I'm also not gonna lie. And when I tell you that I couldn't bring myself to feel angry about it, that's just me being honest. Even when I saw the Iwo Jima picture, I just couldn't get angry. I just was not angry. And so I took some time to think about why, because I think that trusting your intuition is very important. And for whatever reason, mine guided me away from being angry about that photograph in particular. It was neutral, if anything. And it's because to me, that photograph doesn't represent anything. The military in the country that existed when the original was taken in 1945 is gone. The spirit and the values of that country are gone. So what is even left to be insulted? I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. The one that did insult me, though, was the one of the gay marines raising a pride flag in the Iwo Jima likeness, because that truly symbolizes defeat and conquest. The pride flag is the American flag. America is gay. By what do you think a World War II veteran would be more offended? A photo of a group of gay members of the United States Marine Corps raising a flag that represents anal sex in place of the American flag? Or a photo of some Islamic militants mocking that same military? Which one? The one that says that your entire country has been compromised from within or the one that says, haha, we took our homeland back after you left. There is a correct answer to that. And that's why it's important to realize that basically the right is angry and the left is angry in part because the right isn't angrier about it or for exactly the right reasons. And those are the red flags for me. Like, why is that? Why did I agree with Biden's speech? What is really going on here? What's the end goal of this whole operation? Joe Biden is my enemy. I know that. The Washington establishment hates me. They hate my family. They are my enemy. The media serves them. They are my enemy. How can I trust any of them? How can I trust that they are going to accurately and honestly tell me who the bad guys actually are? Oh, well, John, just look at what they're doing. Oh, you mean listen to what feminist activists in the Middle East say they're doing that is then being propped up by CNN, BBC, MSNBC, etc. I'm not saying any of it's true, that it's not true, that it's okay or not. I don't like the Taliban, okay? I've heard about what people say they do to Christians. I know all of that. To be honest, I'm kind of jealous in a weird way. Like a Christian population worthy of being martyred doesn't really exist in America. Like what's going to happen? A bunch of jihadis are going to go to a church. They're going to find some lesbian woman delivering a sermon on how Christ just said that we have to be vaguely nice to one another. And they're just going to say, no Christians here. Keep going. Move along. Like if I could choose what happens to me. Do you think that it would be stuffing myself with corn syrup and prescription medications until I'm 75 and then getting barked at by an overweight nurse for reasons I don't even understand because they don't even speak English until I die in a hospital bed? No, give me the soldier's death at 21. Let me refuse to denounce Christ and get my throat opened up for it. Or as I've always said, let me go out on my feet, T-posing in front of an Antifa Black Lives Matter firing squad. Any last words, Fash? Nope. <laughs> I get it. That's not funny. That's not what well-adjusted people say. That's not the kind of humor we do on this show. Don't die for something. Just live for nothing except the squares, the pods. I know. I'm just asking, though, if Russia, China, the Taliban, if they're the bad guys, why am I rooting for them? Seriously, I've thought about this for a very long time because... I'm an American. I love my country. I would die for my country. So why do I have this feeling of not only understanding, but like excited optimism when I hear other world leaders who are supposedly the bad guys talk? And I realize it's because America, as it used to be, is dead. It's gone. It's probably never coming back, which is fine, lest we forget uh, that we could build something better from the ashes. We've done it before. But it's like, I hear Joe Biden speak, Barack Obama, frankly, even 2021 Donald Trump. You might have seen that I actually fell asleep at his speech um, at CPAC this year because it was so curated to pander to baby boomers who just don't get it. Trump used to get it. 
Oh, that's why it's especially sad. He used to, but I, seriously, I'm listening to these people and I'm thinking to myself, what is this guy even talking about? Is this real? Are we being pranked? And then I see Vladimir Putin, Viktor Orban, Xi Jinping, all of these characters who are enemies of freedom and democracy. And it's like, wait a minute, this guy gets it. He's literally me. And the sobering reason for that is that what this country represents on the world stage at this point is nothing more than anal sex. I'm sorry if that's difficult to hear. It's unfortunate. It's vulgar. But if this country were free to rule over the rest of the world, it would look something like overweight, ugly feminist teachers teaching little little boys about anal sex in state-run schools starting when they're four years old. That's what this country exports to the world. We used to export revolutionary products to the world, not to get excited about consumerism. But seriously, made in America used to mean something. We had a manufacturing economy that enabled a man to raise a family of four on one income with a high school education. That didn't just evaporate. That was taken from you because it made some already rich people a little bit richer. I'm not even old enough to remember what the American dream looked like. I think you'd have to be at least 60 to really have had a taste of it. What do we export now? What do we export to the rest of the world that when it's seen, everybody knows that's made in America? Anal sex, degenerate media, feminism, gluttony absolutely vacuous ideas, et cetera. Like when's the last time you saw a Chevrolet in Tokyo? So here's basically the conclusion. The 20th century historiography is written as communism versus freedom, maybe versus capitalism, maybe tyranny versus freedom. I don't think that those are exactly correct, but that's the accepted interpretation. Okay, cool. The 21st century is setting up to be very simply globalism versus nationalism. That is it. It doesn't matter if you disagree with X, Y, or Z, if this country used to be your enemy or whatever, it's irrelevant. We are drawing one line in the sand and that is nationalism against globalism. Are we going to be sovereign nations and peoples in control of our individual destinies, or are we going to serve a globalist system? That is the question. And it's not the greatest thing in the world, but if we want to win, we have to be honest with ourselves. And the fact of the matter is that right now, the American flag does not represent freedom. It does not represent God or family or even a sovereign country. Right now, when I see the American flag and when the world sees the American flag, they see anal sex, feminism, disgusting, depressed, fat, drugged out zombie people, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I agree with your reaction to this. I agree that it's a disgrace, but that doesn't make it any less true. And so we have to work from here towards changing it for the sake of everyone who fought and died back when this country was actually worth dying for, frankly. Now, when I look at the Russian flag, I might not see freedom and bald eagles and apple pie, but at least I don't see those other things. And to be honest, what I do see is more appealing because I see Christianity. I see nationalism. I see a preserved family structure, or at least a country that doesn't purposefully try to destroy it. So is it any wonder that we're told to be against those people? It's BS. It's BS. You and I want to be left alone. Russia wants to be left alone. And it's the American regime that wants to impose itself on us. That is the enemy. The globalist American empire is the enemy. And being involved in the Middle East serves the ends of the globalist American empire. And the ends are corrupted and evil. And a lot of these reactions can really be traced back to our old friend, the horseshoe theory of practical intelligence. Think about the people of average intelligence who look at the people with below average intelligence who just shout out these like knee jerk solutions. And they go, um, actually, there are so many complex variables at play that sometimes mistakes are made and bad decisions are made because geopolitics is just so complicated and I'm smarter than you for knowing that. And then people with above average intelligence are like, shut up, idiot. It's not that difficult. I will prove this to you by doing impressions that are both implied to be white people so as to avoid any trouble. If you tried to explain the Afghanistan withdrawal to a low IQ person, they would say, why are we still over there? Damn it. We already blew them bastards half to hell. Never forget. And if you explain it to an intelligent person, they'd say, well, it would seem to me that trying to restructure an ancient and highly religious culture through imperial liberalism to which it is antithetical is an impossible task. And perhaps they wouldn't come over here if we weren't going over there. We are united. Let the horseshoe connect. It's the middle that's the problem. I hate midwits. They are so smug. Low IQ nationalism. I'm bringing it back. IQ testing at work for voting. I'm bringing it all back. If you are average intelligence, we are going to bar you from participating in society. We're going to segregate you. At least low IQ people are self-aware. I'm not even kidding about this. If you ever speak to somebody who is truly not intelligent, not just like they don't agree with your politics or whatever, but they're really just not smart, they'll even joke about it. They'll be like, hey, just don't let me do it. God knows I'll just jack it up. And it's the midwits that are like, um, I have education. I have connections on LinkedIn. I'm experienced and I'm smart enough to know that everything is just too complex for me to understand. And it's because we all know implicitly that the flow of information in society is orchestrated by the elites. So the midwits read this propaganda. They perceive it to be the group consensus and they believe it all because they fear being deviant from that group consensus, especially because the stupid people usually just reject it all outright because they're based. And also because they're like, ooh, this is what the smart people think. This is what the experts think. And so they just believe it all because they have no agency. Now, granted, the low IQ people really don't have agency either, but at least they're charming, right? They're fun to be around. They rely on instincts alone to govern themselves because it's all that they have. And it really is such an obvious conclusion 
But people don't like to let the, the micro points impact their macro worldview. Like ask anybody, hey, do you think that most people are basically stupid, that they don't have agency? Yes, obviously. If you've ever driven a car in traffic before, if you've ever been on the internet before, you know that this is true. Now, follow that thought to its conclusion. Go down the rabbit hole and allow your worldview to adjust. It really is a sobering picture, but it's necessary because so much dialogue on the right rejects this reality. And it's because a lot of what the right does is just defend old liberalism, which is why we lose, because we say... We need to teach people how to think, not what to think. Incorrect. That's blank slate theory. That's environmentalist explanation. That's liberalism. The reality is that the vast majority of people do not possess the inclination and or the capability to really think for themselves. And you will never change that. So if you want to live in a safe, free, prosperous, and moral society, then you better be the one commanding the flow of information. Because if not, your country is going to turn into a bunch of gay, atheist communists within a few generations. Does that ring a bell? This Afghanistan crisis was not an accident. It was not a miscalculation. This was was done intentionally for reasons we'll discuss in a moment, but first, I beg you to spare me the, but John, Hanlon's razor, you're a midwit too, aren't you? A smart person would have just said, hey, isn't it better to assume ignorance before malice? And I would have said, well, perhaps generally, yes, but given the level of information at which these apparatuses are operating, et cetera, et cetera, but you just had to use the vocab term, didn't you? You wanted me to not know what that is, so I would have to Google it so that you could feel smart by citing a philosophical concept that isn't even anything more than an idea, not a truth by any means, that's what you wanted. Get out of my bathroom, or I'm calling the police. This facility is for stupid people and geniuses only. Can you imagine that? I'm going to start airing fake political commercials on local stations with low airtime cost. Just like, what would you do if your daughter brought home a midwit? Vote yes on Prop 2. We're off topic. The point is that I am literally smarter than the United States Department of Defense, and so are about 60 to 80% of you guys. We might not have access to the level of information that they do, to the power that they do, but if we did, things like this simply would not happen because we're not evil and we're not stupid. These orders come from the top down, from evil people, and then they are executed by stupid people who think that they're good ideas because they're stupid. And that's the good news with all of this. Like with all of this, this system is too incompetent to be sustainable. And the only reason it's gotten this far along is because of how pacified and numb everybody is because of consumerism, drug use, pornography, etc. Eventually it's going to implode on itself like a collapsing star. And we should all be ready for that. And I might even do a video soon, like top five practical things you can do before ronpaul.gif mode. Let me know if you want to see that. But before that happens, it's going to get really bad for people like us, people who actually care about this country. Like, yes, Joe Biden is incompetent. Yes, a lot of these people are. But it's more likely that this was done intentionally for a few reasons, one of the most important being to break the American spirit. One of the greatest sources of pride that patriots have had in this country for a very long time has been the military. USA, USA, back-to-back -back World War champs, these colors don't run. Now we're demoralized. Thousands of us have died for this. Uh, we spent 20 years on this, trillions of dollars. And for what? What do we have to show for it? How many veterans have committed suicide in the last week because of this? How many are pursuing self-destructive behaviors because of this? If you can destroy everything that one can take pride in, everything worth fighting for, then there will simply be no fight because everyone will be too demoralized. Hey, but at least we're getting thousands of refugees from Afghanistan, right? Republican governors are taking them into red states to totally own the libs by accepting third world refugees in red states because of Joe Biden's big mistake. What an absolute joke, dude. What's going to happen when you import thousands of people into American neighborhoods from a country where 99% of the population wants Sharia law. I guess we'll find out. We have to wait for the expert consensus. We'll need a source first. We need a study. Intuition be damned. Here's what's really happening. War has been declared on you. We're doing another video on the military this week, but just know for now that war has been declared on you. Patriots are being purged from the military under the guise of combating extremism. Memos are being released declaring that anybody who questions the election results or the vaccine or anything like that is actually a domestic terrorist. Is that just the libs being crazy or is that the legal framework to weaponize the DOJ, the NSA, the FBI, the Patriot Act, all this post 9-11 infrastructure against American patriots, against anyone who is not explicitly in favor of this regime? They could do it, and guess what would happen? Nothing. People are already calling us the American Taliban in the mainstream media. Your house could be raided by federal police at 4 a.m. because of something that you said on social media, and it would not get any media attention. You questioning these narratives and getting raided. Your neighbors would say, it's called accountability. It's called be kinder to people. We literally do not yet understand how we are. And the people who should be ringing the alarms on this are talking about women's rights in the Middle East. They're traitors. They're just trying to cash in on you because they want to be able to afford to avoid the consequences of their inaction. But you won't be able to as easily. As far as I can tell, politics is over. Policy is over. Owning the libs unironically is over. At this point, we're just trying to catch a falling knife. It's a rush for power. You're on one side of the room. Antifa's on the other side. There's an open window and there's a knife on the table between the two of you. And you just want to get to the knife first so that you can throw it out the window. But you can't. 
You can't because you're being held back by your ankles, by neocons and these idiots. Don't grab, don't grab the power. No, they're not going to do anything because that would violate the NAP. If you grab the power, how are you any better than them? This is where we're at. The Air Force is practicing landing on U.S. highways for the first time ever. You are being classified as a terrorist. Everything that would need to be put in place for something really bad to happen is being put into place right now. Know that and adjust accordingly. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on post notifications so that you are notified in the event that I post, which happens increasingly often, as many people are saying and happy to see. And then of course, share the video with a friend. Share the video with a friend, with a friend. You find them, you share the video with them. We love to see it. Very epic. Um... I don't really have anything else to say. I feel, I feel like I kind of said what I need to. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.